Hello and welcome. My name is Eddie Jennings. I want to welcome you back to the channel. And this video is going to be the first of probably four or five about um, creating a Hyper-V virtualization environment for your lab. I had a, a friend of mine who's an IT colleague that is wanting to get started with a, a lab at his home and uh, was wanting to use Hyper-V as the virtualization technology for, for his VMs and such. And so I figured I'd, um, I'd make a little video series for those that are at like level zero, have it, have it either um, dealt with Hyper-V before or they have dealt with Hyper-V but they've never had to um, like deploy it from the ground up and make a, a series of videos on how to do that. I'm choosing to, to make multiple videos rather than one large thing that will probably last uh, over an hour so that way um, you can skip over content that might not be relevant to you and, and focus on, on um, content that is, such as in the first video here, I'm gonna go over where can you find Hyper-V to download and how to make some install media. If you already have the media for that, there's no need to watch this video. Go on to the next one about uh, deploying your first host. So hopefully that, that'll, that, that'll make this more um, relevant and useful for you. I have done some videos in the past about Hyper-V and, uh, and a couple on KVM, but they, those are more um, just topic specific rather than deep diving into to how to build the environment. So to get started, we need to have install media for Hyper-V. And the way to get this is from the Evaluation Center from Microsoft. You can go to Google. I happen to have Google open here. And if you were to search for Hyper-V 2019, first link that it will give you is to the evaluation center which this is this is where we want to go you can also get to hear from Microsoft's actual site you can uh, go to Microsoft.com click all Microsoft Windows Server and after a moment or so that will take you to or should famous last words in IT should right will take you to the Windows Server page you can click try Windows Server and that will take you to another page about hey you can download it now and once you get to there when you click download free trial it's taking a little bit longer I'm currently uh, uploading a file to Office 365 it'll take you to the evaluation center now this is a point of confusion maybe maybe not to, to everyone but but yeah I, I've seen this come up uh, a number of times you do not need Windows Server to have Hyper-V. Hyper-V is its own product. It is Microsoft's hypervisor and that hypervisor is completely free. And um, for honestly most production workloads, especially in, in a, a small business environment and for labs, I would certainly use just Hyper-V Server 2019 for, for a few reasons. First of all, you don't have the bloat of the entire Windows Server. You have just the Hyper-V Server. And secondly, you are not tied to Windows Server for licensing. Hyper-V is, or to, to my knowledge, has always been free. I know for a fact from um, Hyper-V Server 2016, 2019, and I believe 2012, I can't speak for 2008 because I, I, I was not around in, in IT at that time. But for uh, after that, I know it has always been free. And so therefore, when the next version of Hyper-V comes out, you can simply uh, upgrade it if you wish. You're not tied to whatever licensing your Windows Server license is that you have, or rather, you're not tied to the licensing of the Windows Server instance that you would have installed on the, the bare metal hardware. Now, you can install Windows Server and enable the, 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 the Hyper-V role, but unless you have a, a particular reason why you need to do that, um, the thing I'm thinking of is maybe needing to take advantage of some of the stuff from um, the Data Center Edition as far as some of its features within Hyper-V, but uh, unless, unless that's a thing, you want to use the actual Hyper-V server. So I'm going to scroll down here to Microsoft Hyper-V Server 2019. And if I click the little plus sign, notice it says evaluations unlimited. This this isn't misleading because it is truly, you know, you're, you can evaluate this for as long as you want. But really it's, this is a free thing. Please download me and use me. Now, to be able to get to this, you'll click uh, ISO will already be selected for you. We're going to start our evaluation, which is really a use in, uh, forever. We'll click continue. We have to fill out a form. I have filled this out several times. 
and when during one of my little test runs here you see it has remembered my information so we'll fill this out company name I'll just use the filled in values that, that I did the during my test run of this I try to to not give you videos full of errors and such I try to test run everything first I can I'm an other IT professional the language that or the country I'm in is the United States and you will be spammed from Microsoft uh, about their products and such I, 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 I'm gonna get a ton of spam from Microsoft I think they're pretty reasonable in, in what they uh, send select your language for me that will be English and then we're going to download it now this is going to take a, a, a few minutes which actually yeah so I was, I was thinking hey it's already done I just I misread the dialogue there I'm going to click save as and I'm going to put put this in my downloads folder and like I say this will take a couple of minutes to download once it finishes I'll, uh, I'll come back and we'll continue the process all right, so the download has finished. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and you will see this ridiculously long name for an ISO file. Now, I'm going to change this to Hyper-V 2019, simply because it makes life a little easier for me. V 2019. If I want to uh, reuse this ISO or, or copy it on uh, using the command line, it'll Hyper-V 2019 will, will make life a little easier. So now the question is, we, how do we get this ISO to be install media for us to install Hyper-V on our host. There are a myriad of programs that you can get to do this. I'm actually going to show you how to do this using some built-in utilities from uh, Windows, or actually built-in utility singular from Windows. Now one thing to note, uh, this works for, for, ISO, for making install media for Windows um, devices such as um, Windows 10 or um, or Hyper-V or Windows Server. I have not had much success with this method if I have Linux ISOs that I'm, I'm wanting to make bootable media out of. There's always something that, that goes wrong with the, the media, but for the Windows side that we should be pretty safe for this. So I'm going to be using a USB drive for this and we need to prepare it to be able to um, get files on it to be used as boot media. So I'm going to open PowerShell, Windows PowerShell as an administrator. I'm going to right click start and Windows PowerShell admin, UAC window will pop up and I'll click yes since I'm a local administrator on this machine. Now I'm at the PowerShell prompt and the command I'm going to run is actually running an application called disk part. And after a few moments or so, it'll come up on our screen as disk part. Now, first, we're going to list the disks that um, that Windows is able to see. And you can see on my machine, I have three. I have a 465 gigabyte disk, a 931 gigabyte disk, and a 7,633 megabyte disk. This is this disk two here is my USB drive because I know it, 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 it's about uh, 8 gigs in size and so that, that's the disk that, that we're going to, to use. It's important that you, you select the correct disk because this process is going to wipe any of the data that you have on the disk. So uh, don't select disk 0 and try to make this happen. So I'm going to use the command select disk and the number which is 2 and it will tell you that disk 2 is now the selected disk. If, and if you're like me and you like to verify that something worked, um, if you run list disk again, you will see an asterisk beside disk 2 indicating that that is in fact the selected disk. So the first thing that I like to do is clean. And what clean does is remove any um, volume and partition information from, from the, the disk. Uh, effectively, we're, we're, we're deleting the data. Now, we're not overriding this with zeros and such. We're, we're just we're clearing partition tables and all that. But for the purposes of making this install media for your lab, this, this is perfectly fine. So the next step is we need to create a partition into which we're going to install data. So to do that, we're going to do create partition, oh, I tend to misspell this, primary, ah, I spelled it correctly, a lot of times I end up spelling like parition or some strange thing like that, but I got it right. So it will say it, it succeeded in creating the specified par partition. Next we need to format this partition, so we're going to do format, and for this 
I'm gonna use FAT32. The reason being, I have um, I'm, I can't remember for a fact if, if the uh, UEFI standard is you have to use FAT32 for for media. I do know in the past I've had some issues with things that are NTFS formatted, so I find that FAT32 is a pretty safe um, file system to to use for uh, making these install media. So FAT32 label will be what I want to name this and I'm going to name it Hyper-V 2019. You can probably see on the left side of my screen the, the disk having that particular label because like I say I try to run through these before I um, before I go to production with a video. And then we're going to do quick simply to make this process not take as long. And um, again data still if there is data there it's still going to be there. We're not overriding this with um, with zeros yet. But as far as from a file system level, the um, the file system has now been formatted, and there, there, there there's no no data there. So it'll tell you it's complete. And at this point, we can do exit and get out of disk part. So now you will see a J drive that has Hyper-V 2019. Now. Yours may, may or may not mount to, to J. Mine happened to, uh, to do that. So uh, whatever mount point that yours selects will be perfectly fine. So now we're going to go back to downloads and we're going to mount this ISO. And again, there, there, there are several ways of doing this. I'm, I'm going to use the, the, the GUI for it. This is, this is uh, worked for me fairly well and we'll kind of give you a visual representation of what's going on. So first, I'm going to mount the ISO, and my uh, computer mounted that to F, and we are simply going to copy all of the data in this ISO. So right-click, copy. We're going to copy it to our newly formatted USB drive. This is going to take about 10-15 minutes or so, even though it says 5 minutes 30 seconds, it tends to take a little bit longer than that, at least for me. And this 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 is a USB 2 um, flash drive, so if it was USB 3, it would be a little quicker. So rather than sit and watch the scroll bar, I'm going to come back when, when this is finished and give you some, some uh, final instructions on what to do with your boot media. All right, so the file copy has finished, and as you can see here, this is the DVD drive, which is really the mounted ISO of Hyper-V. And if I were to click the J drive, then we have the exact same files. So at this point, you would eject or unmount the ISO, and you would do the same for the J drive. And so at this point, the J drive is going to be ready to um, be removed from your computer, or in that case, I mean, this my USB drive that I'm able to, to remove from my um, Windows machine here. And I now have a bootable USB that I'll be able to use to install Hyper-V. In the next video, we're going to get into that process of, of uh, how to install Hyper-V on, on the, the, the bare metal, so the actual physical server. Hopefully you found this video useful for you. If you did, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And there should be a little bell icon you can click when you subscribe. So that way you get notifications of when, when I post new content. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you for taking the time to watch and I'll see you the next time.